Welcome back to Wolf Online. Welcome to the Lincoln B Mark II. Again, but I want to use the beginning of the gameplay that you see running in the background as kind of uh, the chance to make a swift plane review of the Lincoln B Mark II. It is a newly added rank 5, a uh, rank 4 British battle rating 6.0 heavy bomber that comes after the Lancaster B Mark III. But it changes a lot of the characteristics of the Lancaster B Mark III that you didn't expect to change. First of all, the bomb load is awful, the defensive capabilities are partially amazing, partially underwhelming, the survivability of the plane, well, it's kind of mixed, and all that at battle rating 6.0. So what is this plane made of? Just let's have a look at the armor and we can see that there is actually no armor at all except for certain ammunition boxes with 6.35 millimeters of steel uh, around them. The pilot seat has from behind a protection of 8 millimeters and that's it. The X-ray reveals that we have just four crew members for this big heavy bomber. We have the tail gunner between the 50 caliber machine guns. We have the 20 millimeter gunner that sits in the turret on, on top of um, the fuselage for the 20 millimeters. And then we also have this front gunner which sits below the 50 cals, the dual 50 cals. It's an awkward place, but I guess he... I don't know why he is positioned like that and we can see that we indeed just have one pilot. Furthermore, the wings are made to burn basically. We have self-sealing fuel tanks and they are made up like this. Fuel tank, engine, fuel tank, engine, fuel tank, fuel tank, engine, fuel tank, engine, fuel tank. So if you shoot from behind with API shells or API T shells, uh, you're always guaranteed to hit um, a section that likes to burn except for the wing tips. Now while uh, a lot of the times the fire goes out even some engine fires can be pulled out overall the engines yeah they lack any kind of protection so AAA will always cause oil cooling and water cooling uh, systems those um, Rolls-Royce Merlin 68A 12 cylinder inline engines I know the symbol is more of like a V-shaped engine, but hey, they are stock stronger than the Lancasters, but the plane is not really necessarily that much faster. So it's not a speed demon, but you kind of expect this after having flown the Lancaster B Mark III. So that's practically the armor and the X-ray. Let's talk a little bit about the gun arrangement. Now the gun arrangement is like on the Lancaster B Mark III, however you have quite much more punch. So those 50 calibers are the same as on the Lancaster B Mark III, but then this uh, Hispano Mark V cannon turret here makes really for a punchy surprise. However, your belly is completely unprotected. Also, the vertical guidance for this turret is limited. So you can just like shoot at 45, 50 degrees and everything that is above this is, you know, out of your... 20 millimeter gun. I think that even the 50 caliber rear turret can shoot a bit more up just by a few degrees. So when you miss up the turn or mess up the turn into uh, the flying path of an enemy bomber, like I have shown already in a gameplay, you have quite a hard time catching them, especially when you hunt B-29s on the preparation for the landing on Hokkaido map. Or you know you try to fool enemy fighters into the uh, shooting area of this 20 millimeter gunner well then you have a problem so if you just attack the bomber from below you have not a lot to fear from it the 50 caliber machine gunners are also relatively uh, inaccurate so let's talk about the upgrade way first of all the bombs well the stock bomb load is outright awful it's not even enough to take down a mini bombing point or bombing point or mini base whatever you want to call it but that's not such a big problem as the 14 500 pound bombs are a tier one upgrade and they are then enough to take down a mini base effectively um, a lot of people say that 10 of them are enough but I or even 11 but I always could do it with 13 so you have one bomb left, but in practical terms that means all your bombs for one bombing point. And that's the first upgrade. 
the SUBC Mark One. Then the six, uh, then the six one thousand pound bombs are the bomb load that you want to go for. It's less bombs, so you can drop them more precisely. They have a bigger splash radius, so to speak, and they are a tier three follow-up upgrade. The MBC Mark Three upgrade. I highly recommend going for it. It's just easier to deal with uh, bombing situations or even against ships if necessary. They give just they give you more options. And then about the rest of the upgrades, basically go for the turrets, and uh, you begin with the 12.7 millimeter uh, belt selection. The default belt is surprisingly not that bad. The universal belt is the one that I would go for. The armor targets is just something if you want to go strafe some triple A or artillery positions, which I actually do not recommend. Despite the very good handling of the Lincoln B Mark II, it's surprisingly nimble in this respect. Then uh, the new 12.7mm turrets uh, make it them more precisely and last and let them last longer after continuous firing. The 20mm turret belt is a tier 3 upgrade. The default belt is actually not that bad, but it's not the belt that is the problem. So the default belt is uh, half useless with the um, practice and the tracer shell. But the two HEFI shells in the belt really have quite a punch. The armor target is one HEFI uh, round and two AP rounds. And the universal belt is one AP round and two HE rounds, basically. Now the armor target and the universal belt are both stealth belts, so you need to know where to shoot. But again, it's Hispanos Mark V, so they have a high rate of fire. They are relatively precise once fully upgraded, which I highly recommend as a tier 4 upgrade. And they have quite a punch and quite a muzzle velocity. For the engine upgrades, I would go for them at the end of your upgrade way, simply because the plane is so slow in the first place, they do not really make that much of a difference. I would either go for the A-frame or the cover, also I would recommend to go for the wings repair and the fuselage repair to make the energy retention better, the maximum speed better, because most of the time if you want to go fast you need to go into a dive. And for the radiator, that would be the first kind of engine upgrade that I would recommend because even if you use manual engine controls with uh, engine flaps or engine cowlings opened maxim uh, by 100%, you will overheat um, a bit. However, it's not that drastic. You can recover from it very fast by just going off the web, but you know, you want to get the maximum horsepower out of your plane. So yeah, that's the interior and the upgrade way, the armor and the X-ray. So um, let's go for the gameplay. And we right away talk about the gameplay here with the Yak 3P behind me. I desperately try to make my 20 millimeter gun be able to fire by pulling down and now I have him right behind me at around about 700 meters that is a decent distance and you can see he dips below the level so to speak the Yak 9 UT misses me and he smokes already which is always good and then he just yeah he flew right into my um, into my area that I saturated with 20 millimeter and 50 caliber rounds. So, and you can see that, you know, evasive flying is always something that, you know, denies the enemy at least the easy shot, the easy kill. And then people very often don't have a plan how to engage a bomber. And while the Lincoln is not too fast, you can see here I struggle to kind of keep few 400 kilometers an hour um, with level flying. And when I turn into the autopilot, it automatically pitches up a little bit because I think the overall lift uh, is too good. I have two bombs left and obviously my target is the last remaining base. And now the real gameplay begins. The LA-7B actually makes a good thing. And you can see I can't fire at him. 
I can't fire at him because he's too high up. But then he makes a crucial mistake. He dives directly on me. And now he is again in the area where I can shoot at him. And I just missed him. I didn't elevate the gun system fast enough. And now I try to figure out when is the best time to actually yeah to actually drop the bombs I'm not quite in range and now he gets killed by I think the second hit that I snapped off the wing with and that is my second kill and you can see the entirety of the plane is yellowish so I got damage but it it's not really crucial damage, except on the Engine 3 where I have a oil leak. And here I am about to drop bombs. The next thing is how to really drop bombs with a heavy bomber. Uh, the crucial tip is to align the plane in the third person view. Because if you try to correct your um, kind of bearing in the bombing view, it tends to roll around and then when it tries to go uh, out level it doesn't really do that it then rolls back and over rolls so to speak now my plan is simple i want to go back to base the problem is there are not many players left of my team because they just have fallen to the russians and now i'm doing something very very important i try to overheat the entirety of my rear facing gun system why would you want to do that? Very simple. That forces the gunner for a complete reload. When you look into the hangar, you can see that, for example, the ammunition is listed with 700 rounds for the Hispanos and 3580 rounds for the 50 cals. That is true and that is not true. Some of the armament comes into belts and so when you engage an enemy, you fire through the belts and then or the clips rather and then you need to reload when this happens while somebody is on your tail that's bad and so you could see the um, outward fuel tank burned but it got extinguished itself i have a fuel leak but it's not very important and i185 and a la7b come straight from behind bad idea critical hit into him and i snap off his other wing so um, that's my third kill and now I have a Yak-3, probably a Yak-3P and also an I-185 behind me. They are catching up. I try to escape and also get them again into the firing solution of my guns. Now the I-185 dives below me, not just to escape my guns but also to just simply um, get more speed and then I just simply kill the Yak 3P for my fourth kill. That's a double kill already and the I-185 is again in the firing solution. Another fire and that's my ace. Just like that. Triple strike in a heavy bomber against the Russians. The Yak 3P without two wings is still flying around. Nyeh. I'm having none of this. Set, set him on fire just to make sure. Yeah, Yak 3 piece they're a bit like white, white walkers. You just can kill them with fire twice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then I see a Spitfire below me. And he actually is now unrendered, so I even don't see him. Or he's unredboxed, to be more precisely. And uh, yeah, he. I did not... I did not really realize it at the time, but he was the guy, you know, chatting in chat. I was quite having other troubles, you know. Um, at least two of my engines are pretty much crippled. And I tried to go back to base. And now the Spitfire puts on smoke and now it dawns on me. He actually uh, wants to escort me. And there you can see the beautifulness of the stealth belt. He did not know that I actually fired on him. Except if I would have hit him, which I didn't. What a shame. And now I try to maneuver against him a little bit. This surprises people always that bombers, you know, also can maneuver. And again, he's out of the firing solution of the top 20 millimeter gunner. And this guy just wants to escort me, but I'm having none of this. 
Um, never trust a Russian plane, even if it's a Spitfire. Yeah. And now I hit him a little bit. And there we go. Sixth kill. Now, he potentially could have taken me down and it is always if you if you spread the damage all over the surface area of the Lincoln it can tank quite some damage if you concentrate your fire on one part either on one of the wingtips or on the tail section you can heavily cripple this plane trust me and now one engine is officially dead the second one is also um, black and not spinning or not delivering too much power now I try to go back to the airfield and I want to straighten out to land I see this I-185 coming if I would have been in a better shape I potentially could have gone away with it the problem is here I try to turn into him which is the reasonable thing and that shortens the time that people actually can effectively put rounds into you and when then you turn while they try while they shoot you most of the stuff misses but i'm such in such a bad shape that he hits the middle fuel tank and this time the fire yeah does the job i don't have control because also the elevators are shut off and there is a yeah the white cliffs of russia so and that's the battle and of course we lost the entire allied team actually failed all the more surprising that the majority of it were um, British planes. Uh, let's have a look at the results. For six kills, five critical hits and 1.7 tons delivered, I got 87,000 silver lines and 5,792 modification research points with a 30% research point booster on a premium account. Yeah, and there you can see at that point, I did not even have unlocked the fully upgraded 20 millimeter cannons. So, yeah, the result was a bit of defeat. You can see I was uh, one of three players. I had three quarters of the entirety of the kills as a heavy bomber. So, yeah, and we had four bombers on our team, granted that. But also one of the other bombers also got a kill. So, seven out of the eight kills on our team went to bombers. And the rest of the team, if you look through the entirety of the game where tempests and spitfires so it was not like they didn't have firepower and you know performance they just failed so i hope you enjoyed this planning review and i have to say that's it for me today i hope you enjoyed the battle as usual let me know in the comment section what you think about this concept or this format of plane reviews um, together with some nice gameplay also tell me if you have additional tips and tricks for you know getting the research done as quickly as possible and as always thanks for watching thanks for listening please give this video a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and we will see each other in the skies of war thunder